Hey everyone, what's up? It's Sam Perot here. So, um, first off, I do want to apologize about the audio quality. Um, I have an interesting new different setup kind of going on here, but it's not fully finished yet. So yeah, uh, it's been a really long time since I uploaded, and I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys something. So, one thing I never really talked about much was making your maps interesting. Like, uh, making, uh, hooking your player, I guess, kind of. So, let's take and we're going to transform this map, and I'll show you how it's done. Um, oh yeah, the key ring thing. I don't need the key ring or luck. But that is very loud. Alright, so, we're going to take this map, and we're going to slowly transform it into something that's really interesting. So if you're wondering how I did the close together tiles, that is uh, what's called shift mapping. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to add um, some life to the map. So we're going to add like these little bitty slimes uh, walking around, and we're going to add a bat. By doing that, um, yeah, it, it kind of makes your map feel more alive. But we're going to have them interact. So when you touch the bat, he's just going to kind of bounce and squeak. But when you step on a slime, it's going to go squish. And then it's going to kind of... Yeah, you're going to squish it, and then it's just going to pop back in the normal. So let's just see what that little bit does. Let me unlock this, because that's annoying. <laughs> Keyring thing's annoying. So yeah, see? You touch the bat, and he's like, yay. And you squish the slimy. Doink. Doink. Next thing you want is to have something that kind of uh, that the player can interact with that's not necessarily just wildlife like you can have NPCs uh, in places where they're not um, in a town so what I have here is a parallel process and basically uh, I'm tinting the screen and then I'm kind of fading it in from a sort of dark orange to a light regular orange this kind of gives the area more more of like a realistic Atmosphere, I guess, is the term I'm looking for. And right here, um, I have another parallel process that sets a move route for the merchant here to where he always faces the player. So let's see what this looks like with the sunlight and having a merchant. So like, let's say you come in from the bottom. At first, he's just gonna be like, "Oh, okay, there's there's an NPC there." Okay, not a bit, not a big deal. But you go like over here, and you'll notice that he kind of looks at you. And that, that makes you want to interact with the NPC a little bit. So we're going to do that. And we get the shop. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Let me read the sign. So look at the, um, take a look at the screen. Let me go full screen. You can see how... <laughs> squish. 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 Stop hiding behind the trees. Squish. But yeah, if you take a look at the screen light, you can see how um, it kind of looks like either clouds kind of going by... Like, the lighting will change. It's not, like, one direct, strong sunlight. So, yeah, um, that's another thing you can do to kind of add more life to your game. Now, next, uh, we're going to add breakable vases and stuff like that. Instead of just using treasure chests, you should definitely uh, consider... Um, think of Dragon Quest, for example. Um, you, should, you should definitely consider, um, you know, having other things besides that. And of course we have music and background sound now as well. So look, you, you pick this up and you break it. That one had three gold in it. Or you go over here and you open up a box. Yeah, it's an empty box. And I also disabled the ability to run, because this is a friendly area, so there's really not much of a need to, uh, to book it, to hightail it. Um, it. It might be slightly annoying, but at the same time, it, it's actually kind of worth it, in my opinion. But that's up to you. That's that's all opinion based. And my last tip uh, is to use common events. Honestly, um, instead of having the, for example, the vase that we had here, uh, we had all of it in one action. But if you use a common event instead, uh, in this case, common event item vase, you can have a template set up. So it's all running through the common event. So that way, if you change the common event you're changing the way all of the vases work. Um, for example, 
we can have the player and the event switch places. So we're going to have the player. We're going to do direction fix on. Move forward. Direction fix off. And we're going to do turn 180 degrees. Now, when we open one of these vases, uh, I'm going to move one over here so you can see. It doesn't matter what angle you're in. <laughs> see, watch. Girl. Okay, um, I do need to adjust the, the, um, the direction that the vase jumps. But yeah, you can see by changing that one common event, all of them now change. So yeah, um, those are my tips. <laughs> so yeah, so if you want to make your maps look really alive, that's that's a really good way to do so. You know, you don't always have to use treasure chests, and you can make interactive NPCs, interactive little animals, or in this case, monsters, because I didn't have any animal graphics. Yeah, just get creative. You know, um, just I guess when you're making a game, make it what you would want to play. Don't necessarily focus on what you think others will like. Focus on what you would like. Uh, if you can do that, then not only will you have fun uh, making the game, but you will also um, you know, end up making a game that's fun in general because, well, if it's fun for you, odds are it's going to be fun for others. Now, that's not always true, but seriously, unless you're like an insane professional, just make what you would like. And that's all I have to say. Bye, guys.